Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the Bread of Life Missionary Baptist Church located at 1924 West 63rd Street in Chicago, Illinois, where Dr. David L. Sutton is our pastor. We are streaming live via Facebook and are excited to connect with you via social media. Welcome, visitors. We are so glad that you are joining us from the comfort of your home. We pray that you take something uplifting away from worship today and may your life never be the same because we are blessed. Thank you. 
April 19, 2020. In lieu of following COVID-19 precautionary measures, all on-site services and meetings are canceled until further notice. Please remember to run errands of necessity only. Practice social distancing. Wash your hands frequently for a minimum of 20 seconds. Use hand sanitizer when entering and exiting everywhere you travel. Please wear a mask and gloves to help prevent and curb the possibility of becoming ill. If you have tested positive for the virus, please stay home and be well. To stay abreast of current guidelines concerning the coronavirus, please go to chicago.gov forward slash coronavirus. Bread of Life Church is exercising faith over fear through wisdom. Thus, we are conducting Family Word Hour, Sunday School Worship Service, and all Bible study classes on Facebook Live and via conference call. To participate in the Adult Sunday School class, dial 213-493-0606, then enter access code 595 a.m. each Sunday and use the same conference call information for Sunday morning 10.50 a.m. worship and on Wednesdays for 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Bible study. Youth Sunday School class dial 224-501-3412 then enter access code 252-588-517 at 9 o'clock a.m. each Sunday. Worship service will also be streamed every Sunday at 10.50 a.m. via Facebook Live on the Bread of Life page. Tithing and giving options are available by texting BOL Chicago to 77977 on your phone or online via your account with pushpay.com. Or you may send your tithes and offering to the church via U.S. mail to Bread of Life Church, 1924 West 63rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60636. If you have a prayer request or wish to join this church, please dial 773-778-4121. It is now time for our tithing and offering. And the Bible says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I would not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Give, and I'll give it back to you. Press down shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom but with the same measure that ye meet with all it shall be measured to you again for God loves a cheerful
Come on, give God some praise. We believe that the Lord is your strength. Come on, bless the Lord with me if you know that the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength, especially during times like these. Even in the time of weakness, God's strength is made perfect. Come on, give God some praise. We believe that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord. And as we go through the service and continue in worship, I want us to uh, meditate on this particular passage, John chapter 20, verses 19 and 20. And by the way, we want to give God some praise for Reverend McFadden who gave a powerful word on last Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, amen. And so we bless the Lord for him, the youth workers, and most of all, our youth. And so as we go into the word of God, we want to continue uh, to allow God to move in the midst of us, amen. So in John chapter 20, verses 19, 19 through 20, it reads as follows. On the Sunday evening, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Help, I'm on lockdown. Tell somebody out there, help, I'm on lockdown. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, how we thank you, how we bless you. May you continue to strengthen us. May you continue to move in the midst of us as we dive into your word, oh God. May you, oh God, just ignite your word in the hearts of your people. And Lord, we believe you for the fruit. We pray for souls to get saved. We pray for your people to not only be strengthened, but encouraged and inspired to go another day. And Lord, we'll be extra careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. For it's in your mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, amen. Help, I am on lockdown. Lockdown. When we take a look at this text, we can take notice that the disciples were on lockdown. To be on lockdown means to take a security measure during an emergency in order to prevent people from leaving or entering a building. It's a security measure to make sure that those who are in danger remain safe. When we take a look at this text, you can see that the disciples did something like that. When we think about a lockdown and a fire alarm drill, they locked a place. Nobody can get in or out. Anybody remember that coming up in school, you had to fire a drill. So in the same way, the disciples, they had an actual, actual emergency situation. Literally, their hopes and dreams were seemingly on fire. For in their mind's eye, their Savior was dead. But what I want you all to remember as we take a look at this text is the fact that the disciples locked themselves in this dungeon, like cave, uh, in this area where they perceived to quote, quote, be safe. But I just want you all to, be rem to remember this and be mindful of this, that whatever you fear controls you. Whatever you fear controls you. And they didn't realize that Christ had already risen from the dead, so they were still stuck in Good Friday when Jesus had moved on to Sunday. And here in the text, as a result, they were on lockdown. And if you allow me, can I just set the stage a bit? Jesus told his disciples, according to Matthew 26, 2, that he was to be betrayed. Then he says in 2631, this very night you will all fall away on account of me. 
That is from the text of Matthew 26, 21, which I first read. And now I'm going to Matthew chapter 26, verse uh, 31. He says, listen, this very night you all will fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Now, be mindful of what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm working scriptures, different uh, scriptures in one particular context in order to help us to get the message. And so here in the text, as we compare what Matthew speaks of, and as we take a look at John, it happened exactly as Jesus said. Jesus had been captured by the Roman authorities and the Jewish religious leaders due to a kiss of betrayal from Judas. Uh, uh, he literally, literally uh, was taken uh, by force. Uh, in the bondage, or should I say under the oppression and imprisonment of the Roman soldiers. And when the disciples realized that Jesus was not going to retaliate, uh, they ran for their lives and left the great shepherd alone to be crucified. So please don't, don't, don't be discouraged in this. You see, the disciples forgot. We, we, we can see it very clearly in hindsight, uh, but they didn't see it as of yet that Jesus had already mentioned in John 10, 17 through 18, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life. I lay it down only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, uh, down and authority to take it up again. See, they forgot when Jesus began to explain, according to Matthew 16, 21, once again, that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and chief priests and, and teachers of the law, that he must be killed, but they forgot also that he was to be risen from the dead. Therefore, due to their amnesia, the disciples literally ran out of their clothes and garments. And I don't mean to be so hard on them. They, they, they just forgot. That's all. Uh, they was caught up in the moment, and they wasn't trying to surrender. They're not necessarily being cowardice because you all remember, Peter was the person who tried to take up for Jesus. When he, when he went for the soldier's head, and the soldier, I believe, just uh, ducked just to the side, he caught the soldier's ear, and Jesus literally put the man's ear back on his head. Head. And, and so I'm just emphasizing the fact that Peter was willing to fight because that was just in him. But when he realized that this Jesus who he's willing to fight for was surrendering, laying down to the Roman soldiers, he couldn't handle that. And therefore he ran. And not only him, the rest of the disciples. You know, uh, you're scared <laughs> when you run out of your clothes. Peter, as you all remember, denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. Uh, Judas committed suicide. And to make matters worse, the Jewish religious leaders had gotten their way with Jesus by crucifying him on the cross. So they thought. And they realized that they were possibly next, that is, the disciples, next to be on death row. That is, to die the same heart-wrenching and horrible, painful death that their shepherd, the great shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, was to encounter. So therefore, on Friday, after hanging for six hours on the cross, Jesus had given up the ghost. And the Bible says in Luke 23, 46, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last breath. So work with me on that. Where were the disciples? They were nowhere to be found. On Saturday, Jesus is already in a borrowed tomb, but where are the, the disciples? Where, where, where did they go? The disciples are still nowhere to be found, and the scripture 
is silent about their whereabouts. But early, one Sunday morning, oh yeah, that's the Baptist preacher in me. Can't help it. Early one Sunday morning, just before the break of day, according to Luke chapter 24, can I tell the story? Jesus got up from the grave. Hallelujah. He has risen from the dead. The, the tomb is empty. We celebrate the greatest day in the history of the world, the day that Jesus got up from the grave with all power in his hands, and, and we celebrate. No, we don't need to celebrate just on Easter Sunday, quote-unquote. We can celebrate every Sunday. We can celebrate every day of our lives that God, Jesus, has gotten up from the grave. So therefore, we are happy. We are joyous. We are glad, but um, what we can see in the text is uh, the disciples weren't quite that happy or glad. I'm glad that Jesus has risen from the dead. I, I, I'm glad that we can look back and believe that he is alive. Do, do you really believe he's alive? Or are you like disciples thinking he is dead and you have yourself on lockdown? What sets us apart, don't miss this, what sets us apart as a group of believers, as Christians, is that in every other system of belief in religion, all the religious leaders have died. Uh, can I go back? You all know what I'm talking about. Buddha died. Muhammad, Muhammad died. Uh, Confucius died. Even David Koresh died. Anybody remember Jim Jones? He died. Every founder of every religion that has ever existed has died. However, there's only one who has gotten up and he is still alive. Come on, give God some live praise if you believe that we serve a God who has risen from the dead, even from quarantine, even while being locked down. Come on, we know that we serve a risen Savior, so don't allow your praise to be on lockdown. And in this, in this passage here, this same passage, the women, uh, they were at the tomb and, and they were excited because they was there early in the morning. I'm not hard on the brothers, but uh, while the disciples were hiding and we still trying to find them, uh, the women had made their way to the borrowed tomb. And you all remember the angel asked them, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? And the disciples are still yet to be found. In today's text, it tells us that later on, on that same day, Sunday evening, the first day of the, of the week, while uh, the women and many others were celebrating, the disciples were still somewhere hiding, scared with the doors locked for fear of something that wasn't real. Please, let's, let's look at this picture. Let's take a picture. Let's get the picture of this. While Jesus had accomplished the greatest feat known to humankind, greater than the parting of the Red Sea. Anybody remember that during the time of Moses? Greater than any miracle that Elijah or Elisha had ever done. Greater than any miracle that was done throughout the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. It was greater than Jesus feeding the 5,000. It was greater than him healing the sick and giving sight to the blind. Here, Jesus, he committed and, and, and literally accomplished something that no one has ever been able to accomplish, and that was to raise himself up 
from the dead. You know you're bad when you tell what's going to happen before it happens and it happens exactly the way you said it would happen. And Jesus said, this is what happened. I will die. I will lay my life down. And on the third day, I will get up. And it happened exactly like that. How do I know? Because they haven't found his body. Here in the text, we are excited about this, this movement of God that this literally has begun. And where are the disciples? Where are they? They have imprisoned themselves behind closed doors, literally missing the movement of God. Literally missing that moment where God truly showed that he has all power. When Jesus had risen from the dead with all power in his hands and the disciples are, 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 are somewhere hiding, here other people are experiencing something that they of all people should be experiencing. The one who they've been walking with for the last three years. They should be experiencing that. But Sunday evening, hours after he has risen from the dead, they're still somewhere hiding in their orange suits, their prison wear, where no one forced them to be in there. They imprisoned themselves. No one, no one put a a proverbial gun on them or literally a sword on them. Do you know what had them in prison? Fear. Fear put them in prison because they allowed it due to their unbelief. Therefore, it led them to be in a place of disobedience. The challenge for all of us is that we cannot, cannot afford to miss out on a move of God in our lives because we are on lockdown due to our own fears and doubts. Please understand, no coronavirus can stop the movement of God. I don't care if the economy collapses. I don't care if we go back to the Great Depression. I don't care if, if, if half of humanity is, 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 is gone off this earth. God is still moving. He is still in control. Here, the disciples are, are acting like God has been defeated. When we do that uh, thing that many of us do, and that is to get caught up in our own logic and begin to believe our five senses than what God has already told us. That causes us to fall into depression. Are you down and depressed? Why are you down when our Jesus has gotten up? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Come on, if you believe that, bless the Lord. If you believe that, I can give God sacrifices of praise even in the midst of being quarantined, in the midst of hearing about so much sickness and death, I can still give them praise and understand this. That is something that you cannot find within yourself. But if you believe like I believe, and I know you believe it, that we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. Come on, give God some praise. I know it's hard, but I, 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 I dare you to allow your faith to lead you and not your fears. We are not afraid. We are not afraid because we know that we serve a God who will fight all of our battles. And so as we look in this text, let's go a little bit further here. Um, can we just talk about this a little bit? Um, the, the disciples were on lockdown because they wanted to be on lockdown. Don't, they, 
They wanted to be on lockdown. They didn't have to be. They, they had their own little pity party where, you know, nobody knows the trouble I'm going through. Someone know what I'm talking about. And we all have been tempted to start pity parties and we've been invited to pity parties. But I just love the fact to hear that uh, God did not allow them to stay there. Hallelujah. The reality of the matter, though, is that these guys were in the place of disobedience. They were in a place of, of disobedience, worrying themselves, listen, unnecessarily. How do you know, Pastor, that they were being disobedient? According to what we just read, Matthew 26, 32. And then if you go also to Mark chapter 14, verse 28, he told them earlier, uh, not uh, if, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Listen at that. Uh, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Uh, uh, another way of saying it is when, when I get up from the grave, meet me in Galilee, north, uh, the northern part of Israel. He's, and, he, and he's telling, us, uh, telling them this ahead of time. I'm here to tell the disciples, uh, and, 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 and really I'm speaking of us as disciples, that we need to go where God has called us to be. Not necessarily just a physical place, but even a psychological and emotional place. Are we dwelling in places of disobedience, even in the midst of quarantine, in the place of fear, in the places of, of doubt, in the places of anxiety? You don't have to be there. Jesus told him to meet me in Galilee after I've gotten up from the grave, before he actually died. Lord have mercy. Please understand, Jesus never told them after I have risen from the dead to go meet me in some secluded isolated room and make sure that you lock the doors behind you. They were literally in a physical and psychological place of disobedience. According to Luke chapter 24, verses 10 and 11, when the women had told the disciples that Jesus had risen from the dead, the Bible says that they did not believe. Literally, they didn't believe, even when they were told, even when someone from the outside who was experiencing the movement of God, the freedom and liberty of God. Anybody know that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? Even in the midst of people telling them that he is alive, the disciples of all people refused to believe. They thought it'd be better to stay in a place of fear and anxiety. And I wonder how many of us are, are refusing to believe the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ that even in these unprecedented times and these times of uncertainty that our God has risen from the dead. Therefore, come out of your place of bondage. Please understand what I'm saying. That while Jesus is alive, the disciples were living like Jesus was dead. They had the misperception of Jesus. While the women were enjoying the resurrection Sunday, the disciples were still living in Good Friday. While Jesus had set them free, they were still living in bondage. I wonder how many of us are still living in bondage. You all know what I mean. Those type of people, what they attend the church, well, when we used to be able to come to church, right? They were at like Jesus is dead. The worship team, the praise team, and every other type of team would try to get them up. The preacher would try their best to inspire them, and they would just look and stare like Jesus is irrelevant. But these same people will go and watch the bulls, you know, back in the day when they used to win, and the bears back in the day when they used to win, and they will shout 
like there was no tomorrow. And I'm just here to tell you, I, I'm not against Bears fans. I'm not even against Bulls fans. All I'm saying is the Bears didn't die for me and rise from the grave. Uh, the Bulls didn't die for me and rise from the grave. But there is somebody by the name of Jesus. Is there anybody out there who can celebrate the live Jesus with me? Don't act like he's dead. He's alive. Tell somebody right now. Tap him on, on the shoulder in, 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 in virtual land, out there in, in the spirit. Just tap him on the shoulder. Just, just tap, tap, tap and on Facebook and, and let them know that Jesus is alive. I, I dare you to not only say it, but, but type it out on Facebook so the whole world can see. Even those who start uh, cruising and surfing across Facebook, they just may see your comment and your very comment might get them saved. I'm just saying, just, just exclaim and proclaim that our God is living. Even in the midst of death all around us. But what's worse some people refuse to leave their place of bondage, no matter what you tell them. Just like the, the disciples, they refuse to believe. According to Luke 24, 12 and, and John 20, verse 3, only Peter and John left to see what the people were talking about, uh, but they still didn't believe. The Bible talked about how Peter beat John to the tomb. And they pondered these, these things. Why are you pondering? Jesus already said it. I thank God for transparency of the Bible. I and know it seemed like I'm hard on the disciples. I'm not hard on them. I could identify with the disciples more so than the women because we tend to think from our own logic. Uh, uh, we as guys tend to think in our own sense of strength and, 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 and we, we're used to trying to figure things out and, and work things out. But the, the problem here in the text is that while they was trying to figure it out, God had already what? Worked it out. So I love the transparency, how it tells the good, the bad, and the ugly of the various people of faith because we can identify because some of the same issues they had, we are having now. But the, the thing about this that I want us to keep in mind is that we don't have to be locked down in fear and unbelief. Listen, because of Jesus getting up from the grave, we don't have to be locked down in our own sins and, and guilt of the past. That's where many of us are right now. We're still thinking about all the bad things we did. And, and so therefore, we decided that we won't ever go to church. And even during the times when you can experience church at home, there are many who are just skating right by because they're still caught up in their past and they don't see the potential of their future through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Many of us are locked down in our addictions, drugs, and, and alcohol, and, and they have the audacity to speak of liquor stores being a place of, 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 of an essential place. The devil is a lie. I don't care how high that liquor will get you. Sooner or later, it will get you down. But I'm here to tell you, if you believe in Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. We can walk over that which many other people are being ashamed or afraid afraid of. Many of us are locked down in bad relationships, hurts and bitterness and unforgiveness, locked down even in bad marriages. Hello. But God is able to set us free. No, not necessarily you saying I'm going to get a divorce, but God is able to walk into that situation of you all's relationship and bring, bring love instead of hate. Peace instead of strife. Even in the midst of the quarantine where you're working one another's nerve, God can still move. I believe, anybody believe that? That even in a time of crisis, God can draw us closer together. Even with dysfunctional families and, and dealing with unhappiness and, and anger. All those things that tend to happen amongst us and families. I'm here to tell you that this is an opportunity for us to get closer as a family. Come on, anybody believe that God is able to work together for good to all things? Everything can work together for good to those who love him 
and are called according to his purpose. Come on, see the good in this. I know, I know it's hard now, but it's going to get better after a while. Anybody believe that God is able to get us through? Even in the midst of you feeling like you can't go to sleep because you're worrying and you're fear. Please know you all have to be on lockdown. You may be feeling locked down and stressed. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Your debt is seen to be increasing and your money decreasing. And you don't know what you're going to do. God is still in control. He has risen from the dead. He has defeated the greatest enemy known to humanity, and that is death. Come on, give God some praise if you believe it. Even in lockdown. Hallelujah. I know some are still saying, Pastor, I'm struggling. Pastor, I don't know what to do. I said all that to get to this. In John chapter 20, verse 19, it speaks on Sunday evening. The first day of the week when the disciples was together with the doors locked. I wish they locked themselves in due to fear and unbelief. I don't want you all to miss the latter part of verse 19 in John chapter 20 where he says, Jesus came and stood amongst them. Don't miss that. Jesus came. He didn't knock on the door. They didn't even have to let him in. The Bible says, this is the good news, is that he walked into their situation. Even when they thought he was dead, even when they thought that he was defeated and they had given up, Jesus did not give up on them. And he intentionally went after them and he walked through their walls of fear, their walls of unbelief. He walked through not only the physical walls, but even the psychological walls of feeling like that they're all alone. The Lord crashed their pity party. He broke it up. And the Bible says that he said, peace be with you. Lord have mercy. There's some good stuff here. Lord have mercy. I wish I had time. I didn't took too much time already. But literally what Jesus did, he broke into that situation in order to break them out. Oh, don't miss that here in the text. He literally goes into that place of bondage in order to set them free. In other words, Jesus stepped into that place of, of bondage, of, of being locked down, in that place of being quarantined, and he set them free. How many of you all need Jesus to step into your situation? Hallelujah. Anybody believe that God is able to walk through walls? I'm not just talking about physical walls. I'm talking about our own walls. God is so good that he comes in and he says, peace in the midst of fear. Oh, don't miss it. This is really powerful. He, he, he's speaking life. He's, he's speaking in the midst of what they're going through while they're going through it. And he's going to get them through it. Oh, this is the great thing here in the text that here he refused to leave without them. He stayed there right with them. Anybody believe that the Lord would never leave you nor forsake you? He just stepped into that situation and he spoke to them. And, and it's a good thing he spoke because according to Luke, remember I told you I'm comparing scripture with scripture in order for us to get the big picture. I kind of picture in mind a, 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 de a detective or, or an officer who's trying to investigate a, a crime. What he does is he, he or she in, uh, will interview as many witnesses as possible because he's stating, he or she is stating that if I get everybody's testimony, it could give me an accurate picture of what's happening. And I'm just saying that there are witnesses like Matthew and, 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 and John and, and Luke who, who has much to say about this. So I want us to investigate this scenario, this, this reality, so that we can pull truth out of this. And can you, anybody hungry for truth? Come on, follow me here in the text. It's so good that uh, here in the text, Luke brought out something that we all uh, can relate to, that if, if they see somebody walking through walls, you are immediately, you're afraid. You scared. And here in Luke 24, 36 and through 40, he says, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood 
among them. And he says, peace will be with you. Why? Because in verse 37, they were startled. They were frightened. They were thinking they saw a ghost. Lord have mercy. I probably would have been the first one to run. He knew they were ready to run. But he said, peace. I'm not a ghost. Verse 38, he said, why are you troubled? Why do, why do doubts rise in your, in your minds? Look at my hands. I'm talking about the new resurrected body. Even when we get to glory, anybody go home to be with the glory, even today, or whenever you get there, if you know the Lord for yourself, you will see the wounds in his hands. And you see the wounds in his feet. He said, it is myself. Touch me and see. Uh, he says, a, a, a ghost does not have flesh and bones. And, and as you can see, I have. Yeah, see, see, he's proven himself to them. And, and I don't want us to push too fast through this. How many times does the Lord have to prove himself to us? Here he's, he's trying to prove to them that I am alive. I have risen from the dead. No, I'm not a ghost. I raised up, I raised myself up in a brand new body. All I'm trying to say is you can live like Jesus is alive. That's all I'm trying to say. You can live not, not only like he's alive, but that he is active in your situation, that he's willing to step into your place of bondage and set you free. Here in the text, is, you, I want you all to see there's three things he does for the disciples after his resurrection of the dead, and then we'll conclude. There's three things he does here. Uh, the first thing he does is he, uh, Jesus rebukes the disciples. Jesus enlightens the disciples. That's the second thing. The third thing, he revives his disciples. Let's talk about the first thing. In Mark chapter 16, verse 14, uh, Jesus rebukes his disciples. Uh, this is Mark who has a testimony in this same particular situation. And he says, after he appeared, don't miss that, after he appeared, after he revealed himself to the, the 11 disciples as they were reclining at the table, it says that he rebuked them. For their unbelief and hardness of heart. Remember I told you, because they refused to believe even when they were told that he had risen from the dead. They chose, don't miss this, they chose not to believe. They was not forced. They chose, you have the power to believe God or not. Here he rebuked them. And you know, because the Lord, he chastises whom, those whom he loves. And I'm so glad, uh, I'm so, it's so good to know that uh, uh, God loves us so much that he's willing to rebuke us when we are in a place that is out of his will. They were in a place of disobedience. And so he, he, he gets on them a little bit and, and he, he, he tells them, uh, uh, you, 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 you all didn't believe that I got up from the grave. I told you personally and directly. And right now, you, you can choose right now whether you believe that God has gotten up from the grave. Now, not, don't just say it. Faith without works is dead. Act like it. Here in the text, he, he rebukes them because they wasn't acting like he was alive. The second thing he does is that the, the, he, he enlightens the disciples. Uh, uh, in other words, um, while they were on lockdown, he knew he had to do some teaching, some, uh, some changing, uh, to some transforming, something that only he can do. Like the song says, change me. Changed me. Where, where, where it, 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 it speaks of how uh, in Luke 24, 45, it says, then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. Don't, don't, please don't, don't go too fast past that. Uh, he, he's telling them while on lockdown, look at the word. While you're in quarantine, read the word. What does God have to say about this situation? Here, he takes them to the word before he takes them out of lockdown. Because, listen, 
Many times, you could be set free physically and still in bondage psychologically. I never forget being with uh, the, uh, 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 those who were incarcerated at Statesville. And, and get this, get this, they were having church in Statesville. There, there was, there's a church in Statesville with preachers, people who are worshiping. Uh, these brothers, they're on fire for the Lord. And guess what the name of their church is? A church without walls. Hold up, wait a minute. You are imprisoned? And you're going to call your church the church without walls? What they're emphasizing is, is that I may be in prison physically, but mentally, psychologically, spiritually, I am set free. How many of us are walking around, quote unquote, free, but we still have on our orange suits psychologically? Here in the text, God deals with their mind. He deals with their hearts because he want to make sure that they walk in the freedom that he died and rose from the grave for. So the Bible says uh, that uh, he opened their minds so that they could understand. Don't, please don't miss that. It's that he, he, he was literally being a, the Bible study teacher. Uh, and please understand, I know you all say, well, that can't happen with it. Yes, yes, it can, because the Bible speaks of how the Lord has given us his spirit, his Holy Spirit. In John 14 through 16, he speaks of us being given a counselor, someone who would lead us into all truth. So you still have someone in the place of Jesus, just like Jesus, his Holy Spirit, who can open our mind. Pray to the Lord to open your minds as you seek him in your word. Anybody remember Psalms 119, 11? Uh, uh, Thy uh, word have I hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Hidden, another word, what, uh, way of saying it is treasured in my heart. Psalms 119, 105, it says, uh, anybody remember thy word is what? A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. In other words, it, the word of God opens my eyes to see what's happening around me. And please emphasize, I want to emphasize this, that the Lord opened their minds. The most dangerous mind to have is a closed mind, where you refuse to believe despite how much the Lord shows himself to you. So, and the third thing he does, the third thing he does is he revives his disciples in John 20, 20. After, listen, it says, after he said this, he showed them his hands. You all remember that? We just read that. And, and listen, and his side, he's revealing to him all his wounds. God, God is being transparent. Don't miss this. He's being transparent with them. He, in order for him to show them his wounds, he has to somewhat undress himself. Don't mind, this is powerful. He's, he's, he's somewhat, he's, he's, he's revealing himself, undressing himself to a certain uh, point in order for them to see how much he loves them. For them to understand that these stripes, these wounds were all for you. And that's why the disciples, they were revived. <laughs> they were happy. Not only because he's alive, but the very reason, the fact that he died in the first place. He did it all for you and me. And he desires to reveal himself to you even more. To show you himself to show you how much he loves you. And listen, read the text. It says the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Don't, don't miss that. In other words, they see him differently now than they ever did before. See, that's a good thing you can, you can get while we're going through this time of quarantine. I promise you, I know without a shadow of a doubt that many of you all, including me, we see the Lord in a way that we have never seen him before. It's only in the times of darkness that the moon and the stars that shine and the Lord is saying, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming. I am still on the throne. He is the S-O-N who gives light in the midst of darkness. If you believe that, come on, give God some more praise. Hallelujah. 
God is good. And he's good all the time. And that's the good news of this text, that we don't have to stay in prison. We, we don't have to stay in bondage. We can live like Jesus is alive. I'll never forget that context. Here I go again by comparing scripture with scripture. Over there in Ephesians chapter 2, around verse 5, where it says, But God, who was rich in mercy, and because of his great love with which he loved us, listen, and made us alive together with Christ, even though we were dead in our sins, we are alive because Christ is alive. Come on, give God some live praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's truly nobody, nobody like him. I can't help but think about the song that Kirk Franklin uh, had wrote when it speaks of, show me your face. Fill up this place. My world needs you right now. My world needs you right now. I can't escape being afraid. He says, fill me with you right now. Fill me with you right now. Is there anyone who want to say what Kurt says? Let us, let us see you right now. Anybody want to testify along with Kurt and along with all those who believe and walk by faith and not by sight? Let us see you right now, Lord. Let us see. You. Walk into my situation. Step into my pain. Step into my bondage, Lord. I, I'm so, I'm so, so af afraid of what's going on. I, I don't even know what to ask for. Lord, I pray that you will hear my prayers through my moans and groans and may your spirit interpret what I'm saying and, and take it before your, your, your throne, oh God, your, your presence. And Lord, I pray that you, oh God, will shine. Show me yourself. midst of this hard time oh God I can't help but think about this other song it's just my heart is full of songs Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me that's love that's love you all know that they hung him high they stressed him wide he hung his head for me, he died. That's love. That's love. But that's not how the story ends. For in what? Three days, he rose again. That's love. If you believe that, come on, give God some praise with me. Come on, give him some live praise. No, 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 no. Get up from wherever you are. Get off of Bedside Baptist. I know you laying down in the bed. You may be sitting at the table drinking coffee, but I tell you, and I challenge you if you can, to stand to your feet and give God some praise. You don't have to be in a church building to give him some live praise. You can stand right where you are. You can be right where you are and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, because that's what he says. He's looking for true worshipers. Are there any true worshipers out there? Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I pray this, your word, will bear fruit in the hearts of your people as we continue to walk by faith and not by sight. To know that you are on the throne. You have risen from the dead. And therefore, because you are alive, we are alive. In Jesus' name. And all those who believe, give God some more praise. Bless the Lord. And perhaps there's someone out there who don't know the Lord in the pardon of their sins. Who, listening and not quite you're getting there. I'm just here by the Spirit's unction. It's just kind of nudged you to the right side. The Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or woman who trusts in him. And it's just as simple as this, A, B, C's. A, the first of all, admit that you're a sinner. 
Admit that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says also that the wage of sin is death. What is death? Eternal separation from God. But here's the good news. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all you have to do is believe. That's what the B for is for. A is for admitting. B is for believing that uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Come on, all you have to do is believe. And then the Bible speaks of confessing. Confessing that he is Lord. That he is the Savior. That he died on the cross for your sins. And it's just as simple as this. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's all you have to do. The C is for confession. The C is for calling out to him. And if you believe him, Jesus Christ, to be your Lord and Savior, uh, pray with me even right now. Ask the Lord. Repeat right after me right, right now. Lord, oh Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, O oh God, that you sent your son to die on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Father. And I admit that I'm a sinner deserving of death and hell. And I ask right now for Jesus Christ to come and to save me from my sins. Save me, Lord. Come into my heart. I believe that you died and rose again from the grave for my sins. And as a result of me believing, I know that I'm, in, I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for making me a child of you. Lord, I pray for anyone who may have prayed that prayer in their bedroom, in their kitchen, where they're driving a car. Lord, I pray that you, oh God, will work in their hearts. Lord, I pray that that seed that has been cast into their hearts will bear fruit to bear uh, to the point where it's 100 fold. May you, oh God, transform their lives. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Hallelujah. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, come on, give God some praise. The heavens rejoice with one have come forth. So we want to bless the Lord if you're that person. And you can call the church. Call us right now at 773-778-4121. Or you can call my number personally, 312-543-6197. Uh, please call. We definitely want you to be a part of of the greatest, greatest movement known to humanity, and that is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God living in the hearts of people, of his people, Jesus Christ. Come on, bless the Lord once again, and I'm going to ask for Reverend McFadden to come and to lead us to the throne of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We glorify you. We magnify you. You are the promise keeper. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our safe place. God, we come before your throne right now just to say thank you, God. Father, we acknowledge you as the King of Kings. You're the, the Lord of Lords. You're the Lord on the throne of our lives. Father, you know all about us. You made us, God. Father, right now, we just thank you. Father, right now, we come thanking you for your word on today, God. We thank you to uh, know that we can have freedom in you, God, right now. So, Father, right now, we pray for your freedom, that we would embrace it in Jesus' mighty name, God. Father, we, we, we pray for those who may be bound, Father, bound by uh, uh, other people, God, bound by their past, God, bound by 
are things that they're experiencing, God. Father, right now, we, we, we just, we pray for your freedom right now, God. We pray, Lord, that you would just release us, God. Give us the, the courage, God, to walk into the newness that you have given us, God. Father, your word says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed, Father. So right now, we embrace your freedom, God. Father, we, we're free from our mistakes, God. We're free from our past, Lord. We're free from other people's yeah. opinions of us. We're free from, uh, you know, other folks' uh, convictions, God. We're free in you, God. So right now, we just thank you for their freedom, God. Father, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And God, Father, we just thankful right now to know that uh, when we call upon your name, God, things begin to happen, God. We, yeah. we can't explain what happens, God, Father. We think about the, the blind man. He said, all I know is I was blind, but now yeah. I can see, God. We can't explain how you did it, God. We can't explain how you're going to do it. But all we know is when we call upon the name of Jesus, God, you come and you show up. And in our situation, even in the midst of what we're experiencing, God, even in the midst of our confusion, God, the, our tribulation, our temptation, God, our struggles, God, everything that we're experiencing, all we know is when we call upon that name, God, you show up, God. We, we're trusting you, we're believing, and God, right now, we're calling upon that name. What name? That name is Jesus, God. Father Jesus, the, the name that's above every name, God. Father Jesus, the, the name that heals us, God. Jesus, the name that delivers us, God. Jesus, the name that sets us free, God. So right now, we call upon your name, God. Father, for those who are sick, we call that name. Jesus, show up in that situation. Those who are in bondage, Jesus, we call that name, God. Father, we love you, God. We, we, we have an expectation, Lord, concerning you, God. So, Father, right now, as we, we, we come around the, the virtual altar, God, we lay our, our cares and we cast them at your feet. Your word says, casting our cares on you because you care for us, God. Yes. Father, we cast it upon you because we try to handle it on our own, God. It's too heavy for us, God. We can't, we can't carry it any longer, God. So, Father, we, we, we submit, God. Father, we tap out. We, 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 we lay it at your feet, God. Yes. Father, help us to put it down, God, whatever it is, God, that's stressing us out. Help us to let it go, God. Help us whatever's burdening us right now. Help us to drop it like it's hot, God. Help us to let it go, Father. Father, we don't need it in our life. It's hindering us, God. It's holding us back, God. When you said we can be free, we desire to have freedom today in you, God. So right now, we pray, Lord, that you would help us, God, to release it, God. To let it go. Yes, okay. To cast it upon you because you care, God. We desire to be free today. Free from our past. Free today. Free from our mistakes. Free. Freedom today, God. Come on, no more back. No more chains. Jesus, you are the chain breaker. Yes. Father, the songwriter says, I hear the chains falling. So, God, right now, even in the spirit, we pray right now that the chains will be broken, God. That the chains will, uh, the, the, the bands will be broken. That the, the chains will, 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 will begin to fall right now in the name of Jesus, God. Jesus. As a sign of faith, we, we, we shout right now. We don't oh, shout, uh, we shout from victory, God. We claim it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, even before it manifests, we claim your freedom in the name of Jesus. And may we forever find ourselves changed by being in your prayer, in your presence, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray this prayer. Thank you. In Jesus' name, in every heart, say amen, amen, and amen. As we continue in worship, I had to share something with you that really, really uh, blessed my heart. And I truly believe that God was in the midst of this because this is exactly what we meditated upon and I preached about on this morning. And I wanted to share it with you all. It's actually a letter from uh, one of the uh, brothers in Christ who is at Statesville. And um, I just had, I had to share it 
because it was such a powerful, powerful letter. So allow me to read it. It says, Dear Brother Life, attention David Sutton, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hi, my name is Marcos. I think you remember me from our spiritual formation weekend a couple of months ago. David, how are you? I pray that you and everyone at Bread of Life is doing well and staying safe and healthy amid this coronavirus pandemic. As for me, I'm doing okay, but many here at Statesville have gotten infected with the coronavirus. Two men have died here, one of which was one of our North Park classmates. Due to the complications related to uh, that virus, he passed. Many have been taken to outside hospitals, placed on ventilators. ventilators. Over 50 uh, or more are being housed in tents in the gym here for isolation and treatment. The Illinois uh, National Guard is here assisting medical staff with taking our temperature, our pulse, and everything else as well. I know this COVID-19 is affecting everyone in the whole world. Every part of our social and economic infrastructure have left, with, uh, left us with very few words, and only my faith and trust in God is what's getting them through. He says, I'm writing to connect with you and others at your church for fellowship, friendship, and community building, especially during these challenging times we are all experiencing. I want to uh, share my testimony, story, faith, and social justice education, advocacy work with you. He said, I want to share that with you, Pastor. Pastor David, and with uh, our sisters and brothers uh, there at Bread of Life. Please feel free to share this letter and social media links listed below with others you know who might be interested in corresponding with me via email or snail mail. Thanks for reading this brief note. I will write more soon. I hope to hear back from you. God bless you and please take good care of yourselves out there. You are all in my thoughts and prayers. I love you all. And it was such a powerful, powerful letter of which uh, I commit to, and I hope that you commit with me, uh, that we correspond with our brothers and our sisters who are incarcerated, that we start with prayer, and then I will begin to uh, look into how we can continue uh, conversations and just words of encouragement for them, for they're truly encouraging us. Here's someone who um, I just spoke about, uh, the, the church that is, that are part of the church and a part of what we're doing at North Park Seminary. Uh, just so happened to send uh, a letter of which I hadn't read until after I finished preaching. And I just believe that that was God speaking to us. So pray with me as we uh, go through these unprecedented times, uh, trusting God to lead us. In Jesus' name. Now may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep every heart and mind under the sound of my voice. Thank you, Lord, for your word that has gone forth. Thank you, O oh God, for this letter that you have sent us. And I do believe, O oh God, that you have called us for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, amen. God bless you. See you on next week if the Lord says the same.
Thank you.